are such an epic game the last time you played Toronto. How are you feeling going to face them again? Good, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, they're obviously, I think they're they're pretty hot right now, um, scoring lots of goals, and, uh, and I'm going to assume they, they still hold the grudge against us. So it's going to be a tough game. Um, but uh, excited, excited to play against a good competition. You know, the, when uh, when Josie and Jovinko are on top of it, they're amongst the best in the league. So uh, kind of want to play in, in big games. So I'm excited for it. I promise I will never ask you again. But take us through the play in seconds before the big save and, and then kind of what you remember after that. Um, uh, I think I said it numerous, numerous times. It looked like an innocent play, but really uh, coming down the left side and uh, he kind of uh, dinks it in just to almost uh, not let it run out of play. Um, and Josie does really, really well to get up. Uh, kind of looks like he's, he's going to get over him, or if he, even if he gets to it, it's, he's never going to be able to get it back down. Um, and then just try to get set, get, try to get it in the middle as much as I could because you don't know whether it's going to go left or right. Um, and then move my feet as much as I can. And just, it's a desperation save, obviously, with the way you arch back as well. And, uh, just try to claw it out. So, uh, but happy I was able to make it. But, uh, but then the game moves on. You know, uh, um, it goes straight into other situations, and um, you, you want to make you want to make that count. You don't want to be uh, thinking about that save and then make a mistake. So, um, uh, and obviously, uh, the rest is history. The way we, the, the biggest thing is we won in the playoff in, in the in the, in the shootout, and uh, and we're able to make history. So uh, that's the, the lasting thing for us is the fact that we won that game and we made history. Did you know your body could bend like that before it happened? Um, uh, I've seen, I've, I've done things like that in training before, but uh, it's, like I said, usually th those are those are saves that uh, there is some technique involved, but uh, it, it's more of a, uh, we always say, uh, way to chase the ball because uh, it, it's one of those balls where you're, uh, you're not quite sure if you're ever going to get to it, but if you chase it, uh, you might get to it. Um, and uh, again, I can't get enough, uh, give enough credit to the keepers that I train with and, and uh, the goalkeeping staff because uh, that's uh, um, lots of repetition of, 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 of getting to that point. I'm sure you've watched that play a ton. When you see yourself making it, do you, like, when you look at it as an outside observer, do you think, like, oh, I wish I had done this differently or I could have done that? Maybe you don't wish you did anything differently, but you could have done stuff differently or you feel like you played it exactly how you needed to play it. It's a great question. I haven't been asked that question because because uh, it's true. I, as goalkeepers, you always strive for perfection. Um, so was that safe perfection? N no, probably wasn't. Because there's no such thing as perfection. But uh, it got the ball out, and that's most 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 important, right? But uh, um, I think I think what I take from it is I was really happy with my feet there, uh, my footwork. Um, I would have liked to maybe get a stronger push off my left. Um, um, some people argue I should use my right hand. I, I disagree, actually, because if you reach your right arm over your head, it's hard to bend backwards and, and push forward. So I think my choice to, to go with my left, which is actually my preferred hand on that side, save anyways, probably ended up working out. Um, but uh, I want to take credit for everything. But uh, like again, like I said, I think it's it. These are all little decisions you end up making because of the, the hours you put put in on a training field. So, again, the credit really is due to all the guys that work hard with me to make sure that when, when a situation like that comes, you just try to go and and, and the little technical decisions you make on along the way kind of happen on, the, on by themselves. We haven't heard the final lineup and we will until game time, but it looks like that Roman Torres will, will go. What does he bring? And uh, how happy you have him back to me, whatever he can physicality um, I mean he's, he's a big guy he's hard to miss out there so uh, I think he also uh, played exceptionally well against Toronto last time so uh, um, he'll probably be confident coming in if he plays um, with that being said like, like I said before I have the utmost confidence in, in all the guys that whoever may may step up because uh, it's been a strong suit of ours and uh, and we've shown it that uh, defensively we can slot guys in left right wherever we need to um, uh, and then that, that goes a long way. But uh, happy to see him participate in practice again and be healthy. Uh, he's worked hard to get back, so uh, we'll see if he's going to play. We talked about the communication and the outlet, but is the whole defense, you guys' ability to anticipate the pass in the back, something that is, is a strong suit that we don't really see? Because you got to have that anticipate the ball in the space. And yeah, I, I think 
I, I think it's, um, you know, when you talk about defense or defending, uh, a lot of people look at the back five, maybe back six, seven, that's it. Um, but uh, things like that actually are influenced a lot by the guys up top because if they're cutting off angles and pushing uh, people a certain way, it, it allows us to anticipate where the ball may go. Um, so that's why uh, I've been speaking of a, 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 you know, a whole, whole team defending. Um, we're talking about a goalkeeper being the first attacker, well, our striker is our first defender. And if they do their thing right up top defensively, it, it helps us out tremendously in the back. Um, for example, like you're mentioning, uh, you know, anticipating which uh, balls uh, closing down and passing, passing lanes, uh, stepping into two guys that are checking in or, or going in behind and staying with those runners. It's, it, it helps us tremendously if they do the, a good job defensively up top. You, you mentioned the goalkeeper kind of being the first offensive player. Uh, how does it change the way that you, your decision-making process when you have someone like a Will Bruin up top who's maybe playing a little bit more of as a target forward? Uh, I think it's, it's always, regardless of whether you're going to want to play out of the back on the ground or, or, or choose the, the route, route one and go over the top, it's important to always have that option uh, to go along um, effectively and not just some little guy that you're going to lump it up to and lose it every time because it forces the opponent to respect that option, right? Because if, if, if teams are going to know that we're going to play out of the back every time, they're just going to high press. Uh, if they know we don't have an option to go along, then, uh, then it makes it extremely difficult for us to play out of the back. So you have to have a healthy mix of, of going long, of, of going short and building out of the back short, uh, but you have to have effective people in those positions to be able to do it. Steph, you had a pretty interesting opportunity one month after MLS Cup to go train with Josie and Michael in Los Angeles at the U.S. National Team Camp. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like being there with those two guys? Did, did, did you guys talk about it? Did, did Josie say anything to you or anything like that? No, I mean, uh, there, there, there was a huge task ahead of, uh, of the National Team squad at that time. So I think people, people came in focused right away. Uh, there wasn't too much uh, time to just uh, goof around. So. Uh, um, I think the atmosphere was really good. You know, tons of respect uh, amongst all the players, especially since they're all mostly MLS-based players that uh, everybody kind of knew each other. Um, but like I said, there was a task at hand right away, and then people wanted to make sure to give it uh, their utmost uh, uh, focus. And uh, and uh, that was it. The only the only goofiness was uh, you know, I, even though we know each other, you kind of go and uh, introduce yourself to people. And uh, and I had Chad Mar Marshall behind me. Uh, um, always saying uh, he's, he's the MLS Cup MVP. Um, even when I shook Josie's hand and, uh, and Michael's hand, so that's 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 Chad for you right there. But uh, like I said, I, people were um, were focused right away and uh, went to work. You've said your uh, time in Toronto was uh, partially difficult because of all the turnover with the roster and a lot of different coaches and stuff like that. I mean, do you think? Uh, <clears throat> having more stability in Seattle, how is that? Do you think that's part of the reason you've managed to have uh, the success you've had here? I think that's the reason why Seattle's been able to have success, even when I wasn't here. And you can go a step further and say, I think that's the reason why Toronto is having success now. Um, you 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 can't you can't be you can't expect teams to gel if if you have. Six, seven. I think I had seven coaches in five years, over 200 teammates. You, you simply can't. Uh, you know, you have a, a, a back four constantly, a new, new back four, a, a new midfield. You know, that there's, there's, there's so many things that uh, each, each, each player brings, and it's unique about every player. So you need to give those people time. You need to have give coaches time to, to implement their playing style, to, to build a bond with their players. Uh, it's simply impossible if you give a if you give a coach four months and tell him here do your magic and if not you're out of here. Um, so uh, consistency, I think, in professional sports, period, whether it is for players or for coaches, is important. And when you reflect on your time in Toronto, what are the biggest uh, changes or evolution for you uh, personally and as a player from from that time to where you are now? Um, I mean, I think my, my start with, with the Sounders was a bit of a reset, um, which uh, helped me and my confidence to come back and, uh, and kind of get really comfortable. Um, over the last few years, I think uh, Tommy and I have been able to work on certain aspects of my game. Um, as the team has also changed, you know, like we're talking about, for example, playing out of the back and being comfortable with, under, under pressure with the ball at our feet. 
uh, I think I've, I've grown uh, I've grown in that aspect still ways to go but uh, I'm happy with the progression in that aspect so uh, there's always something but uh, first and foremost uh, the confidence that the team gave me back was tremendous and uh, and um, I hope I can play more and more games here for for uh, many years what is the status of your citizenship by the way um, hopefully uh, a few days oh hopefully I don't know I mean when it comes to uh, government stuff it's uh, it can be a few hours or it can be a few years right so uh, we'll see <laughs>